12 inches, 6 inches, 0 inches, how most people would be using a phone when they're talking. Now, let's put it in airplane mode again. That's normal background radiation that we've evolved to be around for thousands of years. Basically, almost none as far as uh, high frequency, radio frequency radiation. Dude, the thing is floored. Over 20, doesn't measure any more than that. Time Streaming I see you, like, data. All right, so your practice is about the breath and the Turn coldness. Turn this down. Thing. Okay. That's video. Now, that's that's with it against your head. You're probably not going to hopefully have this against your head when a video, but it's almost that much making a call. So, say you're watching video, you're going to be about this far away. That's how a lot of people are watching or using data on their phone, let's say at about eight inches. And let's just make sure this is like, I just zoomed forward in the video, so it ha it, it's what it would be if data was coming in. That's eight inches. Major difference in having it against your head. Radio frequency radiation falls off very, very quickly. Now here's if just someone, let's say a few feet from you is streaming video or say next to you on a train or a bus or something. Now here's non Wi-Fi data, just like internet. Look at that. <laughs> the cellular data was turned off. So now I'm just like checking out, let's say the internet. Wow. That's even more than the call. Here's Wim Hof. Let's see. We'll just scroll. Play, a, play some audio. That's over 20. Wow. That's the most I've seen this meter measure. That was just completely straight over 20 average and definitely over peak. It doesn't measure more than 20 when I was streaming audio from this the website. And getting my mixing. Here's video. Okay. So that's how a lot of people are using their phone. Hours a day. Now let's. Wim Hof, my brother. Yes. It's let's good to turn see you off. Again. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, Wim, Ho Wim Hof. Man. I love you too. Awesome guy. Thanks. Let's Every just turn this off. Airplane mode. Okay. That's still next to the phone. Pull it away from the phone. This is what. For thousands upon thousands of years, we've evolved to be within radio frequency, radiation wise. This is what's been normal. Now, here's what most people are dealing with a lot of the time now. Okay, here's a cellular call. 
So this is how most people are using their phone a lot of the time. It's peaking above 20, you can't measure more than 20. It's basically jammed above 20 a lot of the time. So this is tens, tens and tens of thousands of times the normal background radiation. You could decide if that's problematic. The experts say yes, and the experts say no. But it's incomparable to the normal rate of radio frequency radiation that we all experience if we're not right next to wireless communications, especially a cellular phone in cellular mode and not Wi-Fi mode. Now here's a call. Now here I'm about 16 inches from the router itself, only about 12 inches from one of the two antennas. And I've got it shielded with this um, stainless steel window screen I had around used for uh, help for squeezing out um, apple cider. Um, and I'd heard if you that you can shield the router with just window screen uh, and hardware cloth. It's kind of hard to believe, but it's true. You can see we're picking up, let's say, 0.01 or so on average, peaking to 0.8 roughly. Now, when I take the screen off, you'll see there's quite a massive difference. I mean, I'm talking like hundreds of times. Look at that. It just pulses like way more. We're pulsing, you know, to nine, uh, very often to four or so. And also take note, no one's using the signal. If we were streaming, I found this would be much more extreme. Um, and average has gone up a lot too. So again, just to compare it, let's say we're like 0 0.05 maybe an average or 0 0.09. I mean, it's going between 0.14 and you know 0 0.03 and peaking to 5 or so. And I'll put the window screen back over. Quite significant. Now what I found, interestingly, oh, the window screen's off now, it fell down, is that this shielding helps a lot, but it does reduce the signal, as you would think. So if you're more than about 15, 20 feet away, you won't be able to get very good video. I mean, you could, you could definitely scroll the internet here and there, you could send some emails, but you're not gonna send big attachments or get video very well. But for most of the use that I do, and probably most people do, um, it's totally a workable situation. So what we're doing now is shielding um, the router a lot, all the, all the time, and if we just need a stronger signal, we'll pull the shield briefly. And we turn the router off at night all the time anyways. Um, and I also use a power line adapter, which I highly recommend which is one of these, you can just plug this into the wall. The other side is Cat5, Cat6 cable. And then every outlet in your house has internet. You just plug the back of your computer into another one of these boxes and all the outlets have internet signal. I don't know how it works, it's pretty amazing, but it works. And then you can be completely wireless free. You can be completely wired, which has no radio frequency radiation. So again, no one's using this signal right now. And we're pulsing definitely past 10. No one agrees on safe limits for this. There's absolutely no agreement. Um, and they vary wildly. But some commissions in Europe um, say that uh, 10 is a, is a safe limit. Some say 0.1. And then um, in the US, there's organizations they don't there's really no established um safe limit uh for rf just for 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 thermal heating of tissue from radio frequency which is crazy because that's not how the, our cells respond to actual radiation not just thermal 
heating from radiation. They respond to DNA, you know, cellular DNA effects from radiation. Um, and some of the U.S., you know, kind of industry and government standards are sometimes over 100. Um, but now look at this. Right here, we're over 20 a lot of the time. That peak only measures to 20, this, this device. This is a pretty sensitive um, meter, too. But here's something to keep in mind that's really amazing, is it falls off incredibly quickly especially within the first few feet. And then once you get past about six feet, it falls down to like very, very low. I mean, here we're at about eight feet. And we're thousands of times less electromagnetic frequency, high frequency radiation than we are right by the router. So one of the things I'm learning by measuring uh, some EMF in the home is beyond just turn the router off when you're not using it, it's just being at least 10 feet from the router is a really good idea. I mean, just, just arrange it that way. <laughs> it's just, it's not hard to do, I don't think for most people in most configurations. And you know, don't sleep by one of these things on, don't sit by one of them on, don't put your kid by one of them on, probably within... 10, 5, 10 feet, I mean, there's nothing good that's going to come out of that. And uh, we'll see. We'll become clearer in the future what uh, negative health effects come from this because no one really agrees on it right now. Although mm, the people who aren't industry tied and in researching it do agree that there's cellular DNA uh, damage and reconfiguration that happens from radio frequency radiation. But pretty wild. This meter really helps you see things you can't see or taste or, or feel. Although some people do seem to feel and, and have some sensitivity to this radiation. I don't for the most part, unless I'm really close to it. If I put a cell phone to my head, I do notice that. But like my wife, for instance, she, she knows if the router's on or off. I tested her and she'll, you know, kind of nudge me and we're going to sleep. She'll say, oh, do you leave the router on? And, she, and she'll feel it. And I'm like, oh, no, I didn't. And she'll know. And Sometimes I do by mistake, and uh, she she senses it. And some some a lot of people have reported you know sleep effects at, at the very least from this. So I'm gonna stick to our power line adapter use when I'm not using the lap the laptop on the couch, and also to just shielding this. Here I'll put the window screen back on, and you'll see the results. Here the window screen goes on right now. There we go. So that's just an effective way of, of dropping at six to eight feet, dropping radiation to essentially close to background. I mean, not background. It's still, it's still many times background because background would have zero on the peak, but it's very, very low. Seems like a no-brainer. So here are some of the findings that put together, um, just to kind of summarize uh, what I've been learning, uh, testing a couple phones, a couple routers, and my laptop um, for radio frequency EMF. And it's all, pretty much most of it's clear in the video, but um, some of the take-home points are cellular data is massive. Um, it's way more than Wi-Fi, unless you're really close to the router calls or streaming video for sure audio they're all seemingly just as much as the next i mean they both max out um my sensor um and are are are, are yeah are totally high the, the calls just as as much as as streaming data um if your phone's sitting there in cellular data it's pinging pretty high rates here and there but it's not just maxed which it is with a call or data um a phone on Wi-Fi is way lower. That was that's been interesting to see. Um, a router is really high, especially if you're close. Even if you're five, eight feet away, it's actually pretty significant compared to being five or eight feet away from a phone. So it's a much stronger signal, it seems, that comes off of the router. And all of the stuff I tested, all these numbers are from a router on the 2.4 gigahertz. And they now come with five. And so I mine, I keep the five off. And I wasn't even testing it with the five on. I later 
ran it with the five on and it's it's stronger it's noticeably stronger so um that's something to keep in mind too and it may not fall off as quickly too so the signal goes much further from the router is one thing that i'm finding something's really interesting if you look here in the middle um the phone with wi-fi on a call at zero inches is really low compared to half of these and that's a phone call on wi-fi with, with at zero inches i mean that's the phone against your head which is seemingly a there's just no good reason uh, to do that, at least from a radiation perspective here. It's, it's, it's so much higher than if you're even holding it three, four, five, eight inches away. Um, but that's still really low compared to a lot of these. And that's a phone call with it against your head, but it's on Wi-Fi. So big take home is just turn the Wi-Fi on for me. Don't use my cellular um, at all if I'm near Wi-Fi. Um, and so now... Um, if I'm driving in the car, I'm much more le le much less likely to use to use a phone call, to make a call essentially when I'm on data and not on Wi-Fi. Um, there's way more radiation coming out of the phone. Um, I still always hold it away from me on speakerphone. I've done that for as long as I can remember. I, I've ne never felt right putting it against my head, um, even when I had a phone just after college and all this stuff was kind of new. It just seemed seemed wrong. Um, but the data shows that that's that's a smart way to go about it um don't put a don't put these transmitters against your brain especially if you can help it or other important parts of your body um be more than five to ten feet ten better 20 foot even better from a router at all times if you can or most of the time not all times but probably better but you know definitely turn just turn routers off shield the shielding works way better than i thought that, that was an interesting thing to see i mean just putting a window screen uh metal window screen over your router knocks it the um energy coming off of it hugely um and then having the wi this is smaller deal but turning the wi-fi um function off your laptop when you're not using wi-fi because it does also ping your your laptop i think it seems like it can produce its own signal radio frequency signal and it does uh trying to connect if your wi-fi is on so you can turn that off that's essentially putting your laptop in airplane mode um, airplane mode works. That's very clear from doing this. Um, and one of the kind of very comforting parts of doing this is that is just realizing how quickly these fields drop off in, in, um, with distance. And so, you know, just cause your phone's picking up a router signal and maybe 10 or 20 of them in a city that concerns me less than it used to by looking at this data. Um, because just the amount of radiation there is very low if you're not, again, within 5, 10 feet of a router. Now, that could be changing with the routers becoming um, stronger. And with 5G rolling out, I think there's some huge concerns with that. I haven't looked into it much. But essentially, the, more, the stronger we make these transmitters, you know, the more radiation we're putting out. Um, I'd like to take the sensor by a cell phone tower. Um, which I plan to do soon because I know of one that I that I can go near pretty easily and uh, see what that's doing because the, the, the when these when this radio frequency radiation travels a, a lar large distances like more than 10 20 30 feet in strength that's I think what gets really concerning I mean if we're pretty conscious about what we're doing we can keep this stuff away from us a bit you know unless we have to make cellular calls often that that's difficult um, that's probably going to be the hardest thing for me is just really not talk on my phone unless I'm on Wi-Fi is what I'm going to try to be better about.